the recording is started and uh, we'll begin today's lecture then uh, so today we have to discuss the uh, learning outcome number four which is understand professional practice in adult social care and uh, it's related with the unit supporting individuals in adult social care <clears throat> So, we will um, like do a quick recap for the previously which we have studied in the uh, unit and uh, we'll discuss more about today's learning outcome. So, understanding professional practice in adult social care involves various aspects aimed at uh, supporting individual in a holistic and compassionate manner. And uh, there here are like some key elements that contribute to supporting individual effectively in adult social care. So first one, uh, we will discuss about the uh, person-centered care. All of it we have discussed previously and uh, we will um, like engage it more and we will learn more about it. So just for a quick recap, uh, if we discuss about the person-centered care. So person-centered care means uh, embrace a person-centered approach that places the individual at the center of care planning and decision-making. Tailoring support to meet the unique needs, preferences, and goal of each person fosters a sense of dignity, respect, and empowerment. We have discussed earlier about the ethical and legal compliance. So ethical and legal compliance is also important in health and social care. Adherence to ethical standards and legal frameworks relevant to adult social care practice, um, like uh, it includes principles of uh, confidentiality, respect for autonomy and safeguarding um, these all ensure that individuals receive uh, that respect, uh, their rights and well-being. Then we have effective communication. So in effective communication, it is essential to maintain clear, open and empathic communication with individuals, their families and relevant stakeholders. Keeping everyone well informed and involved in decision making processes promotes transparency and collaborative care delivery. Then we have uh, professional development. So, in professional development, uh, we engage in continuous learning and professional de development to enhance skill, knowledge, and practices in adult social care. Uh, staying updated on best practices and emerging trends ensure high quality support for individuals. So we all uh, undergo some sorts of training and CPT activities. So these all are involved in the continuous learning and uh, professional development. We uh, also discuss about the role of multidisciplinary collaboration. So work collaboratively with a diverse team of professionals that includes uh, healthcare providers, social worker and support staff, coordinating care and sharing expertise from various disciplines contribute to comprehensive and holistic support for individuals. By incorporating uh, these elements into professional practice in adult social care, practitioners can create nurturing and supportive environment that meet the diverse need of individual while upholding ethical standards and promoting their well-being. And uh, in the meanwhile, if any one of you have any question, then please don't hesitate to ask. I'll try my best to answer those questions regarding this unit and especially for this uh, learning outcome number four. So this was a quick recap and what is involved in uh, supporting individuals in adult social care, especially uh, when we are talking about to understand professional practice in adult social care. So now we'll move to the next slide. Right. 
so in this one we have to discuss about the indicative content and uh, we have a number of bullet points which we will discuss in this learning outcome so the first one is the role of professional bodies in relation to other social care workers so for example we will discuss about uh, uh, professional bodies like the uh, nhs or we have uh, safeguarding boards so we have discussed everything in detail in our previous lectures as well and uh, the second one is code of practices example uh, in uk code of conduct for health support workers and adult social care workers in england and there is a link as well so if you go to the link if you click on the link then you will get some information regarding the professional code of conduct uh, then we have to discuss about the importance of compliance with legislation regulation guidance and workplace procedures so we have discussed as well like we have to follow uh, some compliance procedures uh, and uh, regulation and guidelines at the workplace so um, for example uh, data protection act gdpr we use in that and cqc uh, is the monitoring body or the organization which monitor us so we have discussed about it as well then importance of working within role and responsibility so every individual as a a uh, caregiver or um, or a healthcare assistant providing assistance to service user we have um, like our role described and we have our responsibilities which we have to fulfill then the next point is about good practice framework and theories underpinning professional practices For example strength based working social care outcomes framework uh, and uh, in the social care outcome framework we have care inspectorate national health and social care organization in uk nhs and dixies etc then we have partnership working example importance to ensure consistency and continuity of care etc and for safeguarding features of partnership working how to work in partnership with other service to the care families and other providers social workers medical staff families local authorities and stations etc so in this point uh, we have already discussed about the interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary team approach so this point is related with that then in the next slide we have uh, agencies potentially involved in partnership working example in uk local authority uh, care provider safeguarding team service user carers and family so all of these are important in involving a partnership working so we are specifically talking about the united kingdom as we are in the united kingdom so we have to follow these uh, uh, partnership requirements then we have to discuss about the barriers to partnership working example professional differences time organization differences um, so yes we every organization has some barriers and uh, which we have to overcome and uh, we need to sort the barriers out and uh, why we do that is to support the individual whom we are looking after then team working uh, team working importance of team working and theories of team working tuckman bablin uh, belbin and uh, okay right so we have to discuss about the importance of team working and it's not only related with again uh, health and social care industry it's related with every organization where we work then we have collaborative and practice uh, participatory approaches to care how to collaborate effectively and ensure participation of service user so again in this one we have discussed uh, earlier as well that uh, uh, we need to engage the service user and we need to find out the best interest of the service user 
and uh, with the help of service user we will make the care plan according to the uh, wishes desires uh, and preferences of the service user then we have impact of partnership working um, so if we work in a partnership then uh, what will happen we'll have better outcome shared decision making choices autonomy so it will help us in uh, delivering a better care then establishing professional relationships so yes we do have uh, uh, to make uh, or maintain uh, professional relationships within organization and uh, the last bullet point is difference between professional and personal relationship and importance of respecting professional boundaries in care work so yes we do have to follow the um, like professional and personal relationship boundaries and importance of respecting professional boundaries in care work so uh, as a care worker or working in health and social care industry we have to follow uh, these values then we'll move to the next slide right so in this one we have to analyze components of professional practice in adult social care so and the next point is ethical and legal framework so ethical and legal framework serves as the uh, cornerstone of professional practice in adult social care um providing guidelines and standards to ensure that individual receive high quality and ethical care by adhering to these framework practitioner can navigate complex ethical dilemmas protect the rights of service user and maintain a commitment to upholding professional standards so if we talk about an example so if we consider a scenario where a service user in a care home express a desire to make a significant financial decision but lack the mental capacity to do so so in this situation practitioners must abide by the mental capacity act to ensure that the individual best interest are prioritized and decisions are made in a manner that respect their autonomy as much as possible within the legal framework by applying ethical principles of beneficence and autonomy practitioners can navigate this scenario while upholding the individual rights and well-being in compliance with legal requirements so overall uh, by analyzing and ex exemplifying the application of ethical and legal framework in adult social care practitioner can uphold professional standards protect the rights of service user and ensure that care delivery is ethical respectful and legally compliant so all these are related to this slide move to the next one so in this slide we have to discuss about the person centered approach and communication skills so a person centered approach is the foundation of professional practices in adult social care emphasizing the importance of recognizing the individually uh recognizing basically the individuality um, and we like treat every individual um, as a um, as a individual and uh, we look for their identity as well um, and uh, individuality and unique needs of each service user by adopting this approach practitioners can create tailored care plans that respect the preferences values and autonomy of individuals promoting a sense of empowerment and well-being so just for example uh, we can imagine a service user in a care setting who has a specific cultural and dietary preferences due to religious beliefs for example if a service user is a muslim or someone is like uh, is uh, following a strict uh, vegetarian or vegan diet so something like that a uh, practitioner applying a person centered approach would take the time to understand and respect these preferences ensuring that the individual care plan accommodates their cultural and dietary requirements 
by acknowledging and incorporating these personal aspects into care plan the practitioner demonstrate a commitment to delivering care that is respectful inclusive and tailored to the individual needs then we have uh, communication skills so effective communication skills are essential for building positive relationship fostering understanding and involving service user in their care decision practitioner must be proficient in both verbal and non verbal communication actively listen to service user demonstrate empathy and convey information clearly and effectively to ensure effective care delivery again just for example uh, for example like um, in a group home setting a service user expresses feelings of loneliness and isolation during a one to one conversation with a care worker the care worker responds with active listening Uh, showing empathy and understanding and engages in a decision to explore sol- uh, a solution uh, and uh, will involve the service user as well into it and then through effective communication skills the care worker creates a supportive environment where the service user feel heard uh, understood and valued leading to improved well-being and a positive care experience so overall like by incorporating a person centered approach and uh, uh, effective communication skills practitioners in adult social care can enhance the quality of care build meaningful build meaningful relationship and empower service user to participate actively in decision regarding their well being this is all about this slide and we move to the next slide and we have to discuss about the collaboration and teamwork and reflective factors so okay we discussed it yesterday as well so we will discuss it again so collaboration and teamwork are vital components of professional practice in adult social care as they support the delivery of comprehensive and integrated care to individuals by working together with colleagues multidisciplinary team service user and external stakeholder practitioners can leverage diverse expertise and perspective to address complex needs and promote positive outcome as an example uh, in a residential care facility a resident health uh, for example if deteriorates and requiring input from various professionals such as nurses social worker and therapist through effective collaboration and teamwork each team member contributes their specialized knowledge to develop and implement a holistic care plan regular team meetings open communication and shared decision making processes ensure that the resident receive coordinated and person centered care that addresses their physical emotional and social needs then we have uh, reflective practice right so <laughs> reflective practices is a cornerstone of profession development in adult social care enabling practitioners to engage in self evaluation uh, learning and growth uh, by reflecting on their experiences practitioners can gain valuable insight into their practice improve decision making skills and enhance the quality of care delivered to the service user when you will study uh, the further levels like for example level 4 5 6 7 so as we continue our studies so we need to do the reflection uh, so as well as we do the reflection in our uh, work experience as well so from work side uh, example could be after a challenging interaction with a service user who displayed distress behavior a care worker engages in reflective practice to analyze the situation through self reflection the care worker identifies areas for improvement in their communication and de escalation techniques by incorporating these inside into their practice the care worker enhances their skills enriches their understanding of the service 
uh, of the services users need and um, and improves the quality of care and support provided in similar situation in future so if we uh, prioritize collaboration and teamwork along with Adopting reflective practice in profession development, practitioners in adult social care can build a strong partnership, enhance care quality, and continuously improve their practice to better meet the needs of service users. Move to the next slide. Okay, in this one we have continuous professional development and professional boundaries and accountability. Right. So continuous professional development, we also call it uh, CPD and uh, it's vital for practitioners in adult social care to expand their knowledge, skill and competencies, keeping uh, pace with industry standard and best practices. Engaging in CPD activities uh, demonstrate a commitment to ongoing learning, professional growth and delivering of high quality care. So for example, a social care worker participate in CPT activities by attending workshop on mental health awareness, communication skills training, and cultural competency. Through these learning opportunities, the social care worker uh, gains insight into addressing diverse needs, improving communication with service users, and enhancing their understanding of mental issues. The knowledge and skills acquired through CPD empowers the social care worker to provide more effective and person-centered care to individuals in their care. Then we have to discuss about the professional boundaries and accountability. Uh, so maintaining professional boundaries and accountability is essential in adult social care to ensure ethical conduct, safeguard, service user and uphold professional integrity by establishing clear boundaries and being accountable for their actions practitioners fosters trust respect a safe environment for service user uh, for example a support worker establishes professional boundaries by maintaining confidentiality about service user information and refraining from sharing personal details about themselves during interaction this boundary setting ensures that the focus remains on the service user needs, privacy is respected, and a professional relationship is maintained. In addition, uh, the support worker practices accountability by documenting all interaction accurately, following care plans, and prom promptly reporting any uh, concern or incidents to the appropriate authorities. This accountability demonstrates a commitment to transparency, responsibility, and ethical practice in adult social care. So now we move to the next slide. So in this one, we have to discuss about the cultural competence and diversity. Right. So cultural competence uh, is a crucial component of professional practice in adult social care, uh, enabling um, practitioners to provide effective and inclusive care to individuals from diverse cultural backgrounds. By understanding and respecting cultural differences, practitioners can tailor their approach, communication, and care practices to meet the unique needs and preferences of service users, promoting a culturally sensitive and responsive care environment. So, as an example, uh, in a care home with a culturally diverse resident population, a care worker demonstrates cultural competence by recognizing and respecting the cultural practices and beliefs of each resident. For instance, a resident may observe specific dietary restriction based on their religious belief. Uh, the care worker then shows that the meal options are provided that align with the resident's dietary requirements demonstrating sensitivity to cultural norms and preferences. By embracing cultural competence, the care worker acknowledges and accommodates the diversity within the care home, fostering a welcome and inclusive environment for all residents. Right. So here we have to conclude it. So, in conclusion, professional practice in adult social care is multifaceted, 
and requiring practitioners to embody various essential components to deliver high quality care and support from upholding ethical and legal frameworks to embracing person-centered approaches, effective communication, collaboration, reflective practices. Um, you also discuss about the continuous professional development, maintenance of professional boundaries and cultural competence. Each aspect contributes to the delivery of compassionate and individualized care in adult social care settings. By analyzing and understanding these components, practitioners can cultivate the uh, uh, skills, knowledge, and behaviors necessary to provide holistic and person-centered care that meets the diverse needs of individuals in their care. Right. In the next slide, we have to analyze the principles and practices of partnership working in person-centered care. So we have to discuss about the partnership working and shared decision making, right? So analyzing the principles and practices of partnership working in person-centered care reveals its crucial role in promoting collaborative and individualized care. So partnership working in person-centered care emphasizes uh, shared decision making where service users are actively involved in decision regarding their care and support this approach recognizes the expertise and preferences of service users uh, empowering them to play a central role in shaping their uh, care journey and making informed choices uh, uh, that aligns with their values and um, like beliefs or their goals. The principles of shared decision-making not only respect the autonomy and dignity of service user, but also strengthens the uh, therapeutic relationship between caregivers and service users by actively involving individuals in the care decision-making process. Partnership working fosters a sense of control, ownership, and active participation in their care which ultimately leading to more meaningful and tailored outcome that prioritize the individual well-being. In the next slide, we have collaborative care planning and communication and information sharing. Right. So, um, Partnership working in person-centered care involves collaborative care planning, where stakeholders come together to develop uh, a comprehensive care plan uh, that addresses all aspects of individual well-being. This holistic approach ensures that care plans consider not only the physical health of the service user, but also their emotional, social, and spiritual needs. By involving various stakeholders in the planning process, in, including the service user, caregiver, health professional, and family members, care plan can be tailored to meet the individual unique circumstances and preferences. This collaborative pro effort promotes continuity of care and ensures that intervention uh, are relevant and aligned with the person's overall well-being. Then, uh, Communication and information sharing. So effective communication and information sharing are vital components of partnership working in person-centered care. Clear and timely communication between stakeholders facilitate a mutual understanding, strengthen the relationship and build trust among all parties involved in the care of the individual. Open communication channels ensure that everyone is on the same page, enabling informed decision making, coordinated care delivery. Furthermore, sharing relevant information among team members and stakeholders. It promotes transparency and ensures that everyone is well informed and encourages uh, active participation in the care process and uh, by prioritizing communication and information. Uh, information sharing, partnership working in person-centered care can enhance collaboration, promote shared decision-making, and improve the overall quality of care provided to individuals. And we have respect for diversity and inclusion, and team collaboration and coordination. 
Right. So in partnership working, valuing diversity and promoting inclusion are uh, essential principles uh, that contribute to culturally competent, uh, culturally competent and person-centered care, recognizing and respecting the diverse identities background and perspective of individual and communities is crucial for fostering a supportive and inclusive care environment. By embracing uh, diversity, partnership working and shows that care is tailored to meet the specific needs, preferences and values of individuals from various cultural, social and demographic backgrounds. Uh, this principles promote culturally responsive care and that is uh, sensitive to the unique needs of diverse population, including those from marginalized or underrepresented groups, ultimately enhancing the quality and effectiveness of care delivery. Then we have uh, team collaboration and coordination. So effective collaboration and coordination among members of the care team are vital components of successful partnership uh, working in person centered care team members including healthcare professionals social workers caregivers and support staff um, they all must uh, uh, together and communicate seamlessly to deliver integrated and responsive care Teamwork involves sharing responsibilities, coordinating care activities, and maintaining open lines of communication to ensure that care delivery is holistic, individualized, and consistent across all dimensions. By fostering a culture of collaboration and teamwork, partnership working enhances the quality uh, and uh, continuity of care provided to the individual promoting positive outcome and improve well-being for everyone. Moving on to the next slide. We have flexibility and adaptability, uh, adaptability and accountability and evaluation. Right. So, uh, partnership working in person center care highlights the importance of flexibility and adaptability in responding to the evolving needs and preferences of service users. Care plans must be dynamic and responsive, capable of accommodating changes in circumstances, uh, goals, and prioritize to ensure that support remains individualized and effective. Flexibility enables care. Uh, teams to make timely adjustment, tailor intervention, and provide personalized care that aligns with the unique requirements of each individual over time. By embracing flexibility and adaptability, partnership working enhances the responsiveness and relevance of care delivery, ultimately promoting positive outcome and sustained well-being for service users. Then we have accountability and evaluation. So accountability and uh, on, ongoing evaluation play a crucial role in ensuring uh, the effectiveness of quality of care delivery. Stakeholders involved in the care process must uphold accountability for their roles and responsibility, actively participating in the shared decision making and care planning processes regular evaluation of uh, care outcome, stakeholders, feedback, and adherence to care plan are essential to monitor progress, uh, identifying areas for improvement, and address any deviation from the agreed upon goals. So by holding uh, all these together, um, and um, we, we are engaging in continuous evaluation. Care teams can uh, assess the impact of intervention, identify successful strategies, and make informed decision to enhance the service quality. So this is all about these two. In the next slide, we have conflict resolution and mediation. Right. So we discuss about 
uh, these two yesterday as well. So partnership working in person-centered care recognizes the potential for conflicts and disagreements to uh, arise within the care process and emphasizes the need for constructive and uh, con constructive uh, conflict resolution and mediation strategies. Effective conflict resolution techniques promote open dialogue, uh, negotiation, and compromise while uh, seeking mutually satisfactory resolution that prioritizes the best interest of the service user. By addressing conflicts uh, promptly and proactively, stakeholders can maintain positive relationship, foster trust, and ensure that care delivery remains person-centered and focus on the well-being of the individual. Incorporating Conflict resolution and mediation practices through partnership working enhances communication, collaboration, and the overall quality of care provided to service user. Resolving conflicts in a constructive and respectful manner, uh, like it contributes to a harmonious care and um, care and environment where stakeholders work together to address challenges, the common ground, and promote the best possible outcome for the individual receiving care. To the next slide. Right, so we have to discuss the conclusion. So in conclusion, partnership working serves as a cornerstone of person-centered care in adult social care setting encompassing uh, essential principles such as shared decision making, collaborative care planning, effective uh, com communication, respect for diversity. Uh, we also discuss about uh, uh, flexibility, accountability, and conflict resolution. Uh, by analyzing these principles and practices, a comprehensive uh, understanding emerges of the provide components that contribute to successful partnership working. This collaborative approach plays a crucial role in promoting individualized, holistic, and responsive care that respects the unique needs, preferences, and well-being of each service user, ultimately fostering a culture of compassion, inclusivity, and excellence in adult social care delivery. So this one is the distinction criteria. We have to discuss about the assess how multi-agency working support protection of vulnerable individuals. We have to discuss about uh, enhanced risk identification and assessment and multi-agency working. Right. So. Uh, Multi-agency working plays a important role in enhancing risk identification and assessment in adult social care setting by bringing together professionals uh, from various agencies, each with unique expertise and perspective. Uh, collaborative assessment, uh, like what it does, it benefits from a comprehensive evaluation of individuals uh, and vulnerabilities their risk and safeguarding needs. This collective approach ensures that no aspect is overlooked, enabling a more thorough and holistic uh, understanding of the individual circumstances by leveraging diverse insights and inputs. Multi-agency working facilitates the implementation of appropriate intervention tailored to address the identified risk effectively, ultimately enhancing the protection and uh, safety of vulnerable individual in adult social care settings. Yes, this slide. Right. So we have to discuss about coordinated support and intervention and early intervention and prevention. Right, so uh, multi-agency working enables uh, coordinated support and tailored intervention for vulnerable individuals in adult social care by um, like by uh, 
doing a teamwork professional from various sectors, including uh, health, social care, housing, education, and any other like uh, multi-agency teams can collaboratively develop holistic care plan that comprehensively address each individual complex need. This collaborative approach promotes continuity and uh, coherence in care delivery, ensuring that support and intervention are coordinated, effective, and aligned with specific requirements of each vulnerable individual. Then if we talk about the early intervention and prevention, so through multi-agency working, early intervention and prevention strategies are facilitated to proactively safeguard vulnerable, vulnerable individuals from harm in adult social care settings. By working uh, as a team, agencies can identify and address emerging concerns swiftly, providing timely support and implementing preventive measures to mitigate risk before they escalate. This proactive approach enhances the well-being and resilience of vulnerable individuals by addressing underlying issues early on and reducing the likelihood of harm and promoting a supportive and pro pro protective environment. Multi-agency working plays a crucial role in promoting early intervention and prevention strategies that contribute to the overall safety and well-being of vulnerable individuals in adult social care settings. Now moving on to the next slide, we have uh, information sharing and joint working protocols and specialist expertise and resources. Right. So multi-agency working fosters uh, information sharing and the uh, establishment of joint working protocols to streamline collaboration between agencies uh, within adult social care setting by implementing shared databases, protocols, and communication channels. Professionals can exchange uh, relevant information efficiently and coordinate responses effectively and make well-informed decision to safeguard vulnerable individuals. These collaborative practices help ensure that uh, like information details are shared in a timely, timely manner, enabling a united and coordinated approach to protection and support. Then we have uh, specialist expertise and resources, right? So in multi-agency working, uh, the pooling of specialist expertise and resources from diverse agencies uh, enhances the capacity to address the complex need of vulnerable individuals comprehensively by collaborating with professionals from different disciplines. Uh, adult social care setting can assess a broader range of skill, knowledge, and resources to support individuals effectively. This holistic approach allows for tailored intervention that are responsive to the unique needs of each individual, ensuring that they receive necessary support and care from a multi-dimensional perspective. Uh, so these all are the important aspects here. Then we move to the next slide. So we have to discuss safeguarding and risk management, empowerment, and participation. Right. So multi-agency working um, like uh, involves safeguarding and uh, risk management practices by enabling the uh, team work and collaborative assessment planning and monitoring of uh, safeguarding intervention for vulnerable individuals in adult social care setting. Through joint efforts, professionals can collectively identify high-risk situations, develop and implement proactive measures, and monitor the efficiency of uh, intervention to uphold the safety and uh, well-being of vulnerable individuals. Um, 
collaborative approaches like uh, ensures a comprehensive and unique um, unique and uh, un, um, a unique response to service safeguard service concern um, and enhancing the protection and support provided to vulnerable individuals then we have uh, empowerment and participation so in multi agency working there is a focus on promoting the empowerment and active participation of vulnerable individual in decision making processes and care planning by involving individuals their families and carers in multi agency meeting and decision professionals ensures that their perspectives are valued their preferences are prioritized and their rights are respected this inclusive approach fosters a culture of empowerment self determination and person centered care where individuals have a voice in shaping their care journey and are actively involved in decisions that affect their well-being so by empowering uh, vulnerable individual and perform and promoting their participation multi agency working strengthens the foundation of person centered and holistic care delivery in adult social care settings and we have continuous improvement and learning right so we have a continuous improvement and uh, learning um, a culture uh, and what it does it promote reflective practices joint training and shared learning opportunities among professional in adult social care setting through collaborative reviews of cases feedback mechanism and uh, knowledge exchange forums professional can reflect on their practices share insights and uh, Uh, identify areas for improvement in safeguarding vulnerable individuals effectively this uh, collaborative approach to continuous learning enhances the collective capacity of profession to refine their practice address emerging challenges and enhance the quality of care and support provided to vulnerable individual if we prioritize continuous improvement and learning multi agency working and shows that professional remain responsive adaptive and uh, informed in their efforts to safeguard and protect vulnerable individual in adult social care settings right so now we have to conclude this one so like in conclusion multi agency working is uh, is important in safeguarding vulnerable individuals in adult social care setting and offering a collaborative and holistic approach to care um by enhancing enhance uh, by enabling enhanced risk identification and assessment coordinated support and intervention um then we have early intervention and prevention we discuss about the information sharing utilization of specialist expertise um safeguarding and risk management empowerment and participation and continuous improvement and learning plus we uh, discuss about the multi agency working enhances safeguarding practices and promote individual well being so assessing the impact of multi agency collaboration uh, it uh, underscores its potential to ensure that the needs of vulnerable individual are effectively addressed through uh, co- and uh, like coordinated efforts across agencies and disciplines are taken and this collective approach not only enhances the protection and support provided to vulnerable individuals but uh, also fosters a culture of collaboration learning uh, and continuous improvement within adult social care setting and ultimately leading to improved outcomes and enhanced well-being for those in need of care and support so these all were the important points 
If anyone has a question, please do ask. Overall, like we have covered all the learning outcomes related with, uh, with this unit. So each unit has uh, four learning outcomes, which we need to learn and practice and uh, like every learning outcome has their own assessment criteria. Then we have the pass, merit, and distinction grades. So we need to work accordingly. And uh, we must need to, again, work on the pass criteria properly. Then we'll go for the merit and the distinction criteria. And we also need to understand the assessment requirement and the criteria. So we always need to look for the keywords, which is in the bullet points or the assessment criteria. And uh, if we miss any important keywords, then we won't get a pass grade. So it's a must that we always look for the keywords and the command verbs. So whatever the command verb is, we will use it exactly as it is. And uh, we will write about the keywords and uh, we need to like uh, work on the uh, every aspect of that bullet point or the question which is provided. So make sure that um, we uh, gather the information from different platforms. It, we should uh, like uh, take the help of books, uh, websites, journals, or like articles or any like um, reviews, systematic reviews or any article or any related um, like information which is related to the topic, we can use that. And But please keep in mind that we need to uh, give the proper credit to the authors. We need to uh, like write the index citation and the references in the end. And uh, we always follow the Harvard referencing style. So make sure that we follow the Harvard referencing style. And uh, there are like different websites which could help us in uh, making the index citation and references. Uh, as I always give example of mybib.com. My uh, I personally use it a lot, mybib.com. Then we have a site this for me. So make sure that um, we do the proper index citation and referencing. In Harvard referencing style, the references should be in alphabetical order. And uh, hopefully we will discuss about the uh, assignment discussion next week. So, but we will discuss it on next Sunday. So um, we won't be having a class on next Saturday. We will take the class on um, Sunday and we will discuss in detail about the assessment structure and how to write the assignment and uh, what should be involved into that and what are the um, keywords and command verbs which we should uh, like uh, attempt in our assessment to get a pass grade and we will also look for the merit and distinction criteria and how to achieve those higher grades as well. And uh, one more important thing is that whenever you submit an assignment, um, after like the tutor marks it, uh, you will get the feedback. So always read the feedback. The feedback has the important recommendation which you should apply in future uh, or in your uh, future assessment or uh, like up upcoming units. So that would help you to um, get a better grades. So you always like have to read the feedback provided by the tutors. So these all are the important points for today's lecture. Again, if anyone have a question, then please ask.
no question so right um, we will then finish today's lecture and then i'll see you on next sunday and we will discuss about the assignment discussion so take care everyone see you next week bye we'll stop the recording